Well, the issue is that athletes really face a problem. Uh, supplements can be contaminated and you just cannot tell from the outside uh, if that's the case or not. I have a feeling that athletes um, have a right to use supplements, to, to use that word, right. Uh, I think it is important to acknowledge that supplements are a part of society. And there's also a fundamental issue here that we ask from athletes to perform to the best uh, of their abilities. Um, and there are certain supplements out there that help them in that regard. So um, yes, it is a problem that supplements can be contaminated. And if you like sports, you should try and do something about it. Well, what we can do, you should first understand uh, the, the, the basics of the problem. Um, the anti-doping rules are not going away. They have a, a, a very specific purpose in, in themselves. Uh, the World Anti-Doping Agency in general does a good job with these anti-doping rules. Uh, regarding supplements, they're a bit hesitant to take action there. So I think that's up to, to other people like anti-doping organizations. Um, and the problem we see now, I mean, we've, we've known this problem even since the 1980s, but certainly since, um, um, since around 2000, uh, the Nendrolone problems coming up. Um, and in those years, we have learned that you should really, um, yeah, that you can encounter this problem anywhere, that it's there. Uh, some, some of the manufacturers understand this and have their products tested. But you have seen all over the world, predominantly in, uh, in Europe and North America, several, um, yeah, several ideas, several schemes, several systems to tackle this problem. So we, in fact, we have created a new problem because you cannot just say you should use tested supplements, but what sort of tests are sufficiently enough? So we need to cooperate and make this sort of yeah, minimal requirements to show to athletes and their support personnel what is in fact good testing.